Hey, it's Jeff Gibbons, and this is going to be a getting started video for Machine. So this video is definitely geared towards beginners. Somebody's looking at Machine for the first time, and you're trying to figure out how to navigate all of these buttons. Well, the browser, I think, is the first place that you need to go. So you click the browser, and up at the top, we see these eight buttons, and they're often used to change parameters, make selections, and you'll see them up on the very top right here. They correspond to whatever is kind of beneath them. So this is navigating between groups and sounds with these little arrows. I can hit the user button if I've got some of my own stored in there. Underneath that we have these knobs, and these knobs are also going to show parameters. So I can change a parameter just by turning this knob. It's going to change this all types parameter. It's going to go from looking for drum kits to whatever else is in there. So let's go back to the browser and just go to the, we're going to start right off the, the top one. The first option in the browser is projects. Let's leave that out for now because we just want to figure out how do I load up just a basic kit and start playing something myself and go from projects over to groups, which is the next one. Groups are where you're going to find your kits. This is the one that I go to the most often. You're going to find the different kits for the libraries and uh, as well you can see the libraries right here. If I twist this knob I'm going to see, um, I'm going to scan through the different libraries I've got. So let's go back to machine. So after we have looked at the groups, which is just 16 different sounds loaded onto each pad, the next subcategory that we've got is sounds. And these are the individual sounds that you could load onto one pad. So I could load something like, uh, if I go to this library right here, let's try loading up this one. And that is just one sound, not necessarily just a sample, but it could be an instrument that machine actually has built in. It's got a synthesizer and drum machine, things like that. And you can load these kind of sounds right onto individual pads. And you can save your own sounds just like that and then load them into a kit or a group like we would have on these last ones. So if I load up a kit, we get all 16. And then if I go to sounds, I can load individual sounds onto each one of these pads from these kits. And if I go further on, the next thing I'm going to see is instruments. I can load up any virtual instrument onto a single pad. So this one I actually loaded just onto this one pad right here. And uh, later on we'll see if we click this keyboard button. I can now play that synth, that one that was just selected. As a synthesizer on these pads. So I'm actually playing that analog dream synth on these pads as opposed to a keyboard. And then the last thing that we've got here is samples. So if I go to the samples, I can load up individual samples that I've got in these libraries. So I can go to this one right here and see all of the samples that we've got in this expansion pack, which is a ton. Here's another really cool tip. When you're using the browser, you're going to see these things pop up right here and you can load them to try playing them. Or if I press shift button right here, so if I press shift and then pre here, now what's going to happen is as I go through these different uh, samples, I'm going to actually hear them. So watch as I twist this knob or this knob right here. And by the way, this knob is called the 4D encoder and it allows you to click sideways, up or down, and, uh, and then it allows you to spin. So that's how I'm usually looking for sounds. And as I go through, if the pre here is on, I'm going to hear that sample. And that goes for everything, so uh, even kits. So use that, use that pre here button to hear things instantly, which is so great. You don't have to load things up. Um, so if I press shift pre here, I'll turn that off. And then another shift thing that you can do, if you find something you really like, you can press shift and then this little star button will turn into a set star and I can favorite it. So now I know that this is a patch that I really like or a sample that I really like. So that's enough for the browser for now and what I think we'll do for the rest of this video is just deal with groups because that's where you're going to find most of your kits that you want to start working with. So we'll stay on groups now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what pre here looks like on that. So I press the pre here button. Uh, that's shift 
and then press the prehear button. And if I go through, I get a little preview of the drum kit or of the group. And there's also a little volume slider right here on the software. You can grab that and just turn that up or down if you want the, the pre here to be a little softer. Okay, so let's go back to 808 kit. And if I press load right now, it will load this drum set or this group up. And I'm gonna turn the pre here off. So shift pre here, turn it off. And the thing that machine will do is it will load that sample pattern into machine. So if I press play now on machine, I can see this whole entire beat that was created by somebody at Native Instruments. And now this beat is just gonna play when I press play. But most of you are probably gonna want to do something on your own. So a button you need to make sure is turned off on the software is over here at the bottom where it says plus patterns. So if I turn off plus patterns, what that means is anytime I load a new kit, now the pattern isn't gonna come with it. And now when I load a drum kit, I won't see the pattern for that drum kit. So now that I've got a drum kit loaded, so let's figure out the tempo. What am I, how am I gonna do that is I'm gonna tap it right into this button that says tap. So if this is the beat, that's my tempo, three, four. So I'm gonna start tapping on the tap tempo button. One, two, three, four. So now the tempo is set in my project. So if I press this plugin button, we can see that my project tempo is at 88.35. And you can see that whether you're on any one of these top three buttons. And this is gonna be important. These top three buttons are gonna make a lot of sense later on. Right now, we're looking at this group. So this group, this is showing us, if I click that plugin button, this group button is showing us any effects that we have on this group. And then it's also showing you a couple other things. If you look way over to the right here, you'll see one slash two. And what that's telling you is with these arrow buttons, I can see two different pages. This button right here, this plugin instance button, I keep pressing that one all the time because it takes me back to kind of the basics of either the group or of an individual sound. So right now, if I click the sound button, I can now see the sampler that is being used for this particular sound, which is this hi-hat sound. Let's go to the kick drum. You can see kick 8082. We see snare, we see the snare uh, sampler that's being loaded. Okay, and this is going to become really important later on. So don't forget about this plug-in button. That's one you want to write down because you're always going to go, where's that parameter? I need to change some parameter on this sound and I can't remember. Maybe I need want to change the pitch of it or something like that. It's usually going to be on this plug-in button. If you press that and then press the sound button, you're going to see the basic settings for each individual sound that you're on. So once you have your kit chosen and you've played in, you've got a little beat ready to go. Okay, so once we have a beat that's ready to go, I'm gonna tap my tempo one more time because I think I slowed down. What we wanna do is try recording this. So the next basic thing you need to understand is a little bit about the sequencer itself. Right now, if I press shift record, it's going to give me a count in. So that is one of the most important things to know. I press shift record all the time as opposed to just record because then I get one bar to give me the beat before I start recording. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is play the beat in. So I press shift, record, it's gonna start. Okay, so my timing was a little bit off, so let's do the quantize thing where we move the notes to the, to the closest grid. And right now our quantize setting is at 1 16th note, which is perfect for this. So let's press shift and quantize, and it's gonna quantize everything 100%. 
So now if I press restart, it's going to start from the beginning, which I like doing. Uh, I press restart. Okay, so that worked out just fine. There's another thing you can do. If I press shift undo, which you're going to do a lot as well, I can also quantize 50%. I love having that little command there as well because sometimes I don't want to quantize something completely. I just want to quantize it a little bit. So it's going to move it a little bit closer to where it should be and that tidies things up. You can also click individual notes and then shift quantize them so that they get quantized perfectly if you want something, some parts to be perfectly quantized. Over in the sequencer we also have the velocity values in the bottom. So if I want to make something a little bit softer I can change that there. And I do like how you've got, you can see the velocities for each individual sound. So I can see the velocities all just for the snare. So if I did want the snare samples to be a little bit softer, I could select them all and then just change one of them and they're all going to change at the same time. Super useful. Now another couple of things about the sequencer itself on the computer. Um, so this little follow song button up top, if it's not on, your project's going to get to the end of the bar or the end of the pattern and you're not going to see what's happening. So make sure that little button is on if you want this project to follow the cursor. And it will just keep re refreshing. Another thing that I noticed that was super helpful was to double click on this little zoom bar at the bottom. If you double click, it fills the screen. And then if I double click again, it zooms in to the spot that you're at. So that's a really nice little feature to zoom in and out, which you're going to be constantly doing in these sequencers. Another thing you can do is just click and drag up and it will zoom in and click and drag down and it will zoom out. So there's some really nice little functionality built into machine. Another super helpful key command, press E and your cursor turns into a pencil. Once you do that, you can now drop in notes and click them and to either resize them or you can click them in the middle to get rid of them. Uh, super helpful. So you can see if I click and drag, it's going to draw in notes according to whatever this quantized value is. And if I do eighth notes, it's going to draw in eighth notes. That is a very time saving little feature right there that I wish I knew about several months ago. Anyways, so this is the kind of stuff you can start figuring out as you play around with the software a little bit more. So that's some of the sequencer basics. And another thing that you really need to understand with machine is how do these patterns work? So right now I'm in ideas view. And if I click on this little button, I'm going to go to the song view so we can see song or ideas. And then there's also the mixer, which I like to access just from the mixer button right here on the device itself. So in the ideas view, what you do is you start building these scenes and these scenes are made up of patterns. So right now I've got a simple pattern. This is my pattern one. I can right click this and rename it and just call it uh, main, something like that, whatever I want. And I can also double click here and rename the scene and call this intro or verse or something like that. The thing you need to understand about the patterns is right now this pattern length is set up in the top right corner. So what I like to do instead is click the pattern button and this little Inf bit of information right there shows you how long it is. So and if I want it to be eight bars long, I just set it to eight and then I click the pattern button to go back to my regular view. Now if I double click on this, I'll fill the screen and I can see there's my first four bar pattern. So maybe what I'll do is command C, copy that and then command V. So now we've got an eight bar pattern ready to go and let's try loading up another group. So what I'm going to do is in right from the device I'm going to click on group B1. So there we go. And what we can do with that is load in uh, another kit or maybe we want to load in an instrument of some sort, right? So why don't we actually just try loading in a sound. So if I go to browser and then stay on machine, we'll just keep it simple. And let's go over to, actually let's go over to the sounds. And we'll go to machine, which is right there. And then we're going to go all types and we're going to go to a bass synth. Okay, so we're just going to look at the bass sounds. I click load. Actually, I can click the pre here, shift pre here. 
And then I'm going to go through these. Okay, so let's go with Big Guy. This one actually sounds pretty nice. I'm going to turn the pre here off and I'm going to click load to load up that sound. Okay, so there's a pretty intense bass sound, but you can see it's only on the first pad. So if I want to play this as an actual bass line, what I need to do is press the keyboard button. So I press keyboard and that takes us from pad mode where you see individual samples or sounds and in keyboard mode, now we can play this just like a keyboard. So, chromatic keyboard, what I'm going to show you is how you can use the keyboard mode to actually load up a scale. Once you're on keyboard mode and you've loaded a sound and you hit that keyboard button, it's going to take that one sound and spill it out onto all of the pads from here on up and then beyond. So if I press the octave up button, maybe two times, now I'm going up higher. And if you want this first note to be a different note to start with, you just press semitone up a few times. Now we're going to start on an F. So if your song's in the key of F, you might just want that pad right there to be F. Or you might want this pad to be F. So we'll just cycle through until we get this one to an F. Maybe take it down the octave. Now this pad is an F. And then what I'm going to do is show you how to use a scale. So I just changed the synth because the other one wasn't quite working for this demo. But let's try this out now. We've got a different synth in here. So we can hear the D major scale right there. Let's change the root note again to an E major. And we can get up two octaves or just beyond two octaves once we load up a scale. So let's try taking that to a minor scale. So that's going to work just fine. We're in an E minor scale. And then I'm going to press shift record to give me a whole bar to start with. Okay, that's good actually. That pattern just two bars long is going to work just fine. Maybe I'll press shift quantize 50% and then I will go to the pattern and make it only two bars long. So now it's just going to keep cycling every two bars as long as I'm playing in this first intro scene. So let's press play so you can see what that looks like. Okay, maybe I'll do a little bit more Mission Impossible here. So I've just, just to finish this video off, I went through and added a couple more tracks here. I changed the drum kit, I changed the bass, and then added a couple more groups to make this a little bit more interesting. And I'm just going to play this little synthesizer part now. So the cool thing about setting your synthesizer, right now I've got an Analog Dream synthesizer loaded onto group E. If I press the keyboard button again, so again, if you can't see the scale, hit the keyboard button. Uh, the scale is minor and it's a C sharp minor scale. So I'm going to press shift record. shift, shift quantize, quantize that completely. And there's my little pattern. So I hope you found this useful. I'm going to be creating more machine tutorials, get into some of the sampling and some of the other fun stuff. And I'm still exploring machine myself. So I'm learning more and more about it every day. And one thing I do that I recommend is that once you get this device, it's just to start playing on the pads, load up any one of your expansion packs or just the basic one and just sit there and start playing the finger drums and get your fingers used to finger drumming. I'm still, I still have a long ways to go, 
but I'm having a lot of fun with it. It's probably the most fun part of my day is when I get to sit down and just play with machine and just practice it, you know, just like you'd practice piano. And if you do like five minutes a day, it'll turn into 20 minutes a day, but even if it's just five minutes a day, you'll get better at it so much faster and just it'll be so much more rewarding working with this thing. I'm excited about starting to play with this live and maybe find some people to start playing with. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Anyways, go to gibbonscreative.ca and find out what else I do. I do uh, photography and video and hit the subscribe button and thanks for watching.